What's going on, baseball fans? How you doing? So the World Series is just around the corner. So in this video, I'm going to give my final predictions. I have not been very good at these. Let's see if I can get these right. Before I get started, if you are new to the channel, think about subscribing down below. Hit the like button, the bell button, the share button. Hit all the buttons. Okay, here we go. Let's take a look at the offenses first and start with the Phillies. This Phillies offense has been a lot of fun this postseason. You got guys like Bryce Harper, an absolute machine this postseason. One of the highest OPSs of all time in a single postseason. Winning the NLCS MVP, hitting the game-winning home run, and the series-winning home run against the Padres. You gotta love it. Uh, Reese Hoskins, he's been hitting, hitting a bunch of home runs left and right. Kyle Schwarber hitting bombs left and right. Other guys contributing in this lineup like Bryson Stott, Gene Segura, even Brandon Marsh coming up with some hits here and there. Got to love what the Phillies are doing here. And taking a look, they're number two in OPS overall this postseason. The Blue Jays are number one, and that was only through two games. But the Phillies, 57 runs through the 11 games. Their offense has been getting the job done. But the Astros, on the other hand, hey, they're doing pretty well, too, taking a look at where we just were. The Astros are right behind them in OPS with a 708 OPS. Uh, not as many games played as the Phillies overall, but the Astros, obviously, this offense is very good. Jeremy Pena has been coming up with some clutch hits, some big-time home runs in this postseason. You've had uh, Jose Altuve, obviously, is off to a, a bit of a slow start this postseason, but getting a little hot there the last couple of games I think Jose Altuve could end up having a big series Alex Bregman's been contributing even someone like a Chaz McCormick coming up with a big time home run against the Yankees Kyle Tucker I feel like he is due I think he could wake up in this World Series and obviously Jordan Alvarez he was big against the Mariners in that first round a little more quiet against the Yankees picked up a couple of RBIs in that series but Jordan Alvarez always a dangerous bat but with the Astros and the Phillies, when you're taking a look at both these offenses, the Phillies right now, they're performing better, uh, more consistently, putting more runs on the board. But you can never take this Astros team lightly. There's a lot to like here in both of these lineups. I think these both of these offenses are pretty even. One thing I do worry about with the Phillies, sure, they've been producing more statistically this postseason, but... Can their bats stay hot in the World Series? That's one thing I'm wondering about. You know, you're going now, you know, on a bit of a break here before the World Series. Could those bats possibly cool down? We've seen it happen before. While the Astros, they seem to just be just more consistent. They're always, they, their approach never changes. They're just always so efficient with the bats. Now, again, I wonder if that could end up hurting the Phillies a bit of a layoff. We'll have to wait and see. But overall, I would say right now, both offenses, I think, are pretty neck and neck. Let's talk about the juicy part of this series, the starting pitching. My goodness, you got starting pitching all over the place in this series. Justin Verlander, Fran Valdez, Christian Javier, Lance McCullers Jr. for the Astros and for the Phillies. You got Zach Wheeler, Aaron Nola, your big two. You do have Ranger Suarez there as your number three. And then Bailey Falter, the number four. Didn't do very well in his one uh, start this postseason. So I don't know how much he'll end up being used, maybe out of the bullpen possibly. But uh, for the Phillies, you're looking at probably around a, a three-man rotation here while the Astros could turn to four legitimate starting pitchers here. Now, I want to try and break this down the best I can. Now, let's talk about Justin Verlander first. Justin Verlander, a Cy Young kind of a season. If we take a look at his pitch breakdown, Four-seam fastballs, sliders. He'll throw some curveballs in there as well. Justin Verlander has had one of the best fastballs in the game this year. A negative 24 run value. His fastball is just insane. As for the slider and the curveball, throws a good curveball and the slider as well. A negative six run value for the slider. Negative nine for the curveball. Now, I want to take a look at a couple of stats here. If we take a look, so we just saw Justin Verlander, the second most used pitch he, ha or pitch he has is the slider. Now, if you take a look here at the Phillies, they've done pretty well against sliders this year. In the second half, a 7.0 run value against sliders. That's ninth overall. However, if we take a look at the curveballs, a negative 3.7 run value have not done very well against curveballs. And that is also the second pitch for Framber Valdez. He has a nasty curveball. I could see the Phillies having a bit of a tough time against Framber Valdez. I mean, my goodness, he'll get ground balls for days, especially with that Astros defense behind him. And if we actually go take a look here at the batted ball statistics, so usually with ground ball pictures, now you if you're going up against teams that tend to hit more ground balls, uh, that's going to be more favorable for you. So if you take a look here, the Phillies, 
Uh, 13th overall in ground ball percentage, a 43.7. So right around the middle of the pack, that's a pretty healthy number for the amount of ground balls. So I could see Framber Valdez really having his way with this Phillies team. Now, as for Justin Verlander, I could see the Phillies really taking advantage of some of those sliders but then he also has a curveball as well and like i said the phillies haven't been very good against curveballs this year and they have done well against fastballs but justin verlander's fastball is on a different level i think that's going to be an interesting matchup now if we take a look at someone like zach wheeler now most likely i would think zach wheeler is going to get the game one start a lot of fastballs a lot of sliders and a lot of sinkers as well if we take a look at how the astros have done against sliders you know not great i mean they don't rank horribly you're not gonna have a lot of teams hitting sliders very well like except for the phillies but a negative 3.6 run value however the astros have been a good fastball hitting team uh taking a look here six overall against fastballs this year so i think with someone like zach wheeler i think they could match up with him pretty well and if you take a look at someone like an aaron nola curveball is the second most used pitch 26.5 percent of the time if you go to take a look at how the astros have done against curveballs this year now we just said the phillies have not done very well against curveballs houston on the other hand they have done a little bit better a 1.6 run value against curveballs now you know these are all just numbers at the end of the day but i think the astros when it comes to zach wheeler and aaron nola i think they can definitely take it to these guys i definitely think they can definitely score some runs against them i think the phillies can score some runs against the astros as well and another thing i want to point out too with the phillies you have ranger suarez as your number three but houston against left-handed pitching this year has been really good a 124 wrc plus against left-handed pitching i think that could spell some trouble for ranger suarez as well when it comes to Verlander's fastball and the fact that, that he has, even though the Phillies do hit sliders better than other teams, they don't have curveballs very well. So I could see Verlander mixing in some curveballs as well. And Framber Valdez, I really think he's going to be a big time piece in this series for the Astros. I think he's going to end up being really good. Uh, the numbers show hey, the Phillies not very good against curveballs. They can hit, you know, a decent amount of ground balls as well. I think that can go in the favor of a Framber Valdez. But when you're kind of just looking at the starting pitching as a whole, the depth of the Astros, it's just so much better than the Phillies. Now, in the Padres and the Phillies series, I thought the Padres starting pitching depth would overmatch the Phillies. And I ended up being wrong about that. However, this Astros starting pitching is on another level than the San Diego Padres. They're not, they don't just have depth like the Padres. They also just have some really good starting pitching. Now the Padres, sure, you got Darvish and Snell and Musgrove, but my goodness, Verlander, Valdez, Christian Javier, who dominated the Yankees, by the way, and also Lance McCullers Jr. That's a completely different level. To me, I got to give the edge here to the Houston Astros when it comes to starting pitching. I definitely think the Phillies can hold their own with some starting pitching, but I just feel like the Astros, you just got top tier pitching to match up with Wheeler and Nola and really good starting pitching depth as well. Moving on to the bullpens, this Houston Astros bullpen has also been very good. One of the best bullpens in the postseason this year. None of these guys have been giving up runs. Presley's been dominant. Rafael Montero, dominant. Neris, very good. Brian Abreu throwing nasty stuff out there. The one fastball that he threw on the corner to Giancarlo Stan, 99 miles an hour on the corner. Stan didn't even swing at it. It was that nasty. This bullpen for the Astros has just been absolutely shut down. Now, the Phillies, they've definitely been going up against some good bats. They've had their fair share of runs given up. Uh, but this bullpen has still been really good. Uh, if you take a look, you know, Dominguez, he's been seeing a lot of action this postseason. Had his struggles against the Padres there uh, in game five, but overall he was still very good and he's been very good this postseason. Jose Alvarado has been throwing gas. Eflin's been seeing a lot of action. Robertson as well. You've been seeing Brad Hand, Bilotti. Uh, in my opinion, the Phillies bullpen has been really good, but this Astros bullpen, they have just been completely nasty. They have just been coming in and just shutting the door on both the Yankees and the Mariners. Now, again, going up against the Braves and the Padres, those are very good teams. But 
the way this Astros bullpen has just come in, they have just been shutting the door. It has just been really cool to see like what this bullpen has been doing. A lot of attention goes to the starting pitching with the Astros, but man, oh man, this bullpen has just been absolutely nasty. I think I would have to go with the Astros bullpen over the Phillies. And one last thing I want to point out in this series are the defenses. If you take a look here, the Astros, the fourth best defense in Major League Baseball this year, 67 defensive runs saved, a 17.5 UZR, a 30.8 defense overall, 30 outs above average, while the Phillies have had one of the more worst defenses in Major League Baseball this year. Taking a look at negative 18.6 defense, negative 34 defensive runs saved, a negative 11.3 UZR, negative 35 outs above average. Now, the Phillies defense has looked better this postseason, but the one thing that worries me with the Phillies, against this Astros team, you cannot make mistakes. We have seen this Astros team this postseason take advantage of so many errors in that Yankee series alone. You had Bader uh, dropping the ball out there. There's a miscommunication with, with Judge. That led to runs. You had uh, Glaber Torres with a bad flip to uh, trying to go for the double play. That led to runs. The Yankees, they made costly mistakes. And the Astros, every single time, took advantage of those errors. And they scored runs. I feel like the Astros they're they're very primed to do that in this series now the phillies again they've looked better defensively this postseason but can they keep it up here on the big stage against a really good team in the houston astros you cannot give them an inch at all because if you give them one inch they're gonna take five so that is one thing i am a little bit concerned about when it comes to this series the astros defense is much better than the phillies will that come into play We'll just have to wait and see. In the end, when I'm looking at these two teams, the Houston Astros, the Philadelphia Phillies, I'm seeing two really good teams here. I love both the offenses. I think there's firepower in both lineups. Really fun lineups. I, I love seeing Kyle Schwarber just hitting bombs. I wish he was still on my Red Sox. Bryce Harper has just been extremely fun. Reese Hoskins has been clutch. Castiano starting to wake up. But then again, I love some of these bats too in the Astros lineup. You know, Jordan Alvarez reminds me of David Ortiz. Bregman has really bounced back this year. Even someone like a Chaz McCormick has come up in a clutch spot this year. Kyle Tucker, Jose Altuve, I'm expecting those guys to wake up for the World Series. Really liking both of these lineups. But when it comes to the starting pitching and the bullpens, I just think the Astros have the edge. Not only do they have deeper starting pitching, but they have top tier starting pitching that can match up with the likes of an Aaron Nola and a Zach Wheeler. And they're also really good against left-handed pitching. Will that come into play? Well, I mean, we'll have to wait and see. And, and one more thing I want to point out too, one of the big arms for the Phillies is Jose Alvarado, a lefty. And again, the Astros have been good against left-handed pitching. Could that come back or could that come into play? You know, even someone like a Brad Hand as well. When we're looking at the Astros, they're just all righties. So, but these arms have just been so dominant for the Astros in the bullpen. Uh, it's been pretty fun to watch. And then again, what I mentioned also about the defense is the Astros, you cannot give this team an inch at all. And the Phillies, with how they play defense this year, I think it's very possible they could make some mistakes in this series and with the Astros every time they're going to take advantage of it I think the Astros are going to end up winning this series it just feels like they've been on a, on a mission this entire year they've just looked good from start to finish they have not lost in this postseason everything is just so efficient on this team and if I'm going to say this one more time if you give them an if you give them an inch they're going to take five the Astros I think are just the superior team I think Dusty Baker is going to end up winning his first World Series ring. I got the Astros winning this in six games. I think the Phillies are going to be really fun here. Another thing I do worry about, I forgot to mention with the lineups, is will the layoff kind of cool down those Phillies bats? We'll have to wait and see on that. But in the end, I just like this Astros team. I think they're just the better overall team. They have an offense that can match up with Philly. They obviously have starting pitching, deeper starting pitching, and top tier starting pitching at that. The bullpen has just been shutting it down completely. I think the Phillies will be very competitive in this series, but in the end, I think the Astros are going to win this in six games. So that's my prediction. Tell me what you think down below. What is your prediction for this series? Let me know. But that's all I have for right now. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.